Hello, hello, hello. Good day, good day, everyone. Welcome to another video tutorial. This time, our first ever uh, video tutorial for physics laboratory. So, again, I am Engineer Ramela Ramirez at your service. So, what I am what I am going to show you today is a simulation for physics. So our topic for today is all about, let's see, we are going to uh, check on the work and energy. So let's say work energy and power. So let us uh, have some simulation here. Let's see, let's see, let's go to the Hooke's law for some form of work, energy, and power. So let me just uh, so we are talking about Hooke's law here. So as you can see, we are going to check on the uh, different uh, variables that we have to show in here. Uh, remember, Hooke's law is all about elasticity of materials. And uh, we are going to show here applied forces, the spring constant, and we would know displacement, equilibrium position, and also we are going to show the values. Let us check in here. Let's say we're going to have a spring constant of 120 and we are going to move it to 450 for the spring constant, let's say 500 Newton per meter. And then we apply a force here, as you would notice while I am moving this portion, you would notice that the applied force is also increasing. So as you would notice from zero of applied force, there is no movement in the spring. So we have a spring constant here, by the way, of 500 Newton per meter. And you would notice that as I am increasing the applied force, while I am increasing the applied force, you would notice we've got here 36 Newton, 45, 46, 78, up to 100. And you would notice here you have the spring force, which is also uh, shown in the figure, what the applied force here is 100 Newton. And you would notice that the spring force is also 100 Newton. And you would notice the displacement, which is in green. You have 0.2 meters. So let us see what happens if we reduce the applied force. So when we reduce the applied force of 50 Newton, remember the spring con the uh, spring force would also be 50 Newton. And then you would notice the displacement here is 0.1 meter. So previously, when we show the 100 Newton, you would notice that the displacement here is 0.2 meters. So that's approximate, uh, that is, uh, one half, okay, one half the 0.1, 50 Newton of uh, applied force with a given um, applied force of 50 Newton, we have a displacement of 0.1 meter, comparing it to an applied force of 100 Newton, the displacement becomes 0.2 meters. So as um, you can see, when the applied force is increased, the displacement also increase. Okay, so well, you would also notice that the spring force here, 100 Newton, is the same as the value of the applied force. That only shows a presentation or simulation of the um, application of the Newton's law of motion. For, to maintain equilibrium condition, to maintain balance condition for every action, there has to be an opposite but equal reaction. So that is why when we applied here 500 Newton going to the right, 
a spring force of 100 newton is produced going to the opposite direction, going to the left. So you would see here uh, the, the values. And let's say, for example, what would happen if we reduce the spring constant? So the spring, if we reduce the spring constant, you would notice that, okay, if we reduce the spring constant with the same applied force of 100 Newton, what happens to this, uh, to the displacement? The displacement increased. So from 0.2 previously, when we had a 500 Newton per meter spring constant, from 0.2 meters displacement, Upon reduction of uh, the spring constant to 100 newton per meter, you would notice that the displacement becomes 1.0 meters. Okay, so uh, what you are going to do later on is that you're going to show me computations or calculations on how you're going to solve for the different spring constant given this, uh, what formula can you deduce given this um, particular simulations. So let's say if we don't have spring force, it, it will not show, but you would notice if you're going to check in here, all the variables that you would want to look into, then you would have the values of the applied force, the spring force, this displacement, equilibrium, position, and values. Take note that Hooke's law is regarding stress and strain. So that is regarding the modulus of elasticity. So modulus of elasticity is stress is given by the uh, equation of stress divided by the strain. So it specifically states that the stress is directly proportional to the strain. So uh, Hooke's law is all about modulus of elasticity. So if you would want to determine the different modulus of elasticity of different materials, then you can make use of the Hooke's law. So the, the modulus of elasticity is dependent on the kind of material that you have. So say, for example, the material is um, a, a rubber or a plastic material or a rubber material, then you would have different different value for the uh, modulus of elasticity. In this case, you would see that uh, the displacement would tell whether the um, material used as, is uh, uh, elastic or not. So in this case, we have a, a spring and uh, you have a spring constant here. So that means uh, we, we determine the, the value of the displacement or that is can also be considered as deformation of the spring. So what happens now if we reduce, if we reduce the force to a negative force? So you would notice that the spring has been compressed. So uh, when we apply negative 100 Newton, meaning we apply the compressive force here, you would also notice that the spring was compressed. But when you pull, when you applied a 100 Newton, the spring was deformed and it was elongated. So you would notice those are the simulations that we have. Okay, so if you are going to reduce the uh, apply more of the spring constant, you would notice if we have an applied force of negative Newton, meaning we compress the uh, spring, you would notice that upon increasing of the spring constant, you would notice that we have also um displacement but take note of the direction of the displacement here meaning we are compressing the spring so you would notice we are compressing the spring here unlike if you have an applied force of 100 newton the direction of the displacement is on the opposite direction meaning it it elongates so if the application of the applied force is a negative Newton, so you would also notice that the applied force is uh, has a direction going into the left. 
uh, and that the equivalent spring force is going to the right. So that is how we illustrate the Hooke's law. So later on, you will be required to do your own experiment in your presentation. You may use your simulation or you may use calculations, whichever you would like it to be. So that's it. Uh, so I think we, we might be having another one. Let me share with you another simulation. So we have here, okay. So we have here a pendulum and we will see what would happen if we have this data, data here. And uh, if we move, if we move the length, so you would notice the length, the length of the pendulum. So the, it was a uh, change. You would notice here, this is the position of the pendulum. So we are going to say that the length is one meter and that the mass that the pendulum is carrying, uh, we are going to increase it okay, to 1.5 kilogram. Then we are also going to make use of gravity of the earth. So we are not going to uh, change this, but uh, because we are on the earth, okay? So we, we, we will determine what would happen to the pendulum if there are lots of friction or none. Okay, let us say uh, we are going to have this one. So let's play this one. So that we have, this is how we do the pendulum, okay? Okay. So well, let us try reducing this one. Then we are going to reduce also this one, the second length. Okay, you may also show the, you may also uh, reduce the length of the pendulum. Okay. Okay, so this is how we show the uh, pendulum. Okay, so let's see if you have here kinetic energy, potential energy, and you've got the thermal energy and the total energy. So you may show your ruler, you may show the stopwatch, you may also show the period trace, you may proceed with the simulation for the pendulum. And then let's see. Let us try showing the ruler, the stopwatch, and the period timer. And then, okay, no. We are going to make use of the 9.81 for the gravity. Okay, so we are going to show the velocity, the acceleration. You have here the ruler, you have the energy graph here, and of course you have the stopwatch, the period timer, and we are going to set the length. Let us try the length of length one that we are going to try is 0.7 meter. We've got only one mass here, one kilogram. And of course, we are going to use the gravity of the earth, which is equivalent to 9.81 meter per second is squared. And we are, no, we are not going to consider friction. So let us try moving this at 90 degrees. So let us try what would happen if we release this one. Okay, so let we will see what would be the period and then you would have here, you would see here that uh, we have energy, we have a created kinetic energy and then of course you have the potential energy here being shown here. 
you have the green and the blue one. You have the mass. And then, of course, you have that means we've got a very good view, glimpse of what happens to the pendulum. So let us try stopping this one or we are going to stop the pendulum. Okay. And let us try it. Let us try showing it in this slow motion. Okay. That's how we completed the 90 degrees. Okay, so that is 180 degrees simulation. And you would notice the kinetic energy here, the potential energy again, and the total energy being created. So what would happen now? What do we do when we have what? Uh, we're going to change this one. We're going to. Okay. Let us uh, change the presentation. We are going to show again the velocity, the acceleration, and then also the ruler, the stopwatch, and the period timer, and then, of course, the energy graph that's created. And then what we are going to do now is to increase the length of the pendulum. And just to increase the length of the pendulum, the same condition that we did the last time. Up to nine, we are going to use the 90 degrees release for the pendulum. Let's see what would happen to this one. We have the period here, okay. The period is about 2.3774, comparing it to the other one. So let's say we are going to show this in a slow motion. Then you would notice you've got the kinetic energy and you have the velocity and the acceleration here. You have the yellow one is for the acceleration and the green one is for the velocity. Okay, so that's how the pendulum would be simulated. So what happens now if we increase the mass? If we increase the mass to 1.5 kilogram, okay, you would notice there is a slight change in the velocity and acceleration and also in the kinetic energy. Let's say we decrease the mass. What happens now to the kinetic energy and the potential energy? This also decreases. So that means the mass has a lot to do with the kinetic and the potential energy. Okay, so you have the kinetic and the potential energy here. Okay, so you have 1.5 kilogram increasing the mass to 1.5 kilogram makes the kinetic energy, potential energy, and the total energy. Okay, increased also. Now, what happens if we reduced the length. With the same, you would notice here what happens to the pendulum here. You would notice the length was reduced and you would notice that instead of only having a 90 degree here for the pendulum, the pendulum rotates at the 360 degrees. If we reduce it to 0.1 meter, you would notice that the acceleration has also increased while the velocity decreased. So let's see what happens if we increase the length. Okay, so you would again notice that from the 90 degree position, initial position, okay. 
you would notice that we will have here reduction of the movement and you would notice that the period is also determined and you would notice here some of the simulation of how the pendulum would go about it. Okay. So that the period is about 2.3430 seconds. Okay, and you would also notice that we have here the kinetic and the potential energy increased. So the kinetic, as you can see, the kinetic and the potential energy is uh, proportionate to the length and also proportionate to the mass. As we increase the mass, potential kinet and kinetic energy is also increased while the length, if it is increased, then potential energy and kinetic energy is also increased. So that's it for today. I shall see you in the next video tutorial. Once again, this is Engineer Ramirez. See you, see you, see you.